started. All right, so we got some beautiful, fresh, crisp rhubarb we've just taken out of the ground here. And what we see when we go to the shops nowadays is what you're getting for $5. Yeah. I gotta say, Paul, it's, it's pathetic. Oh. Uh, we'd like to sort of actually bundle up uh, enough for people to sort of feel like they are getting value for money. These are organic, yeah. chemical free. So yeah. that, that's what you should be getting for $5. Yeah. Look at that. I mean, that's healthy, f fleshy, and fully, you know, yeah. packed up. Do you know? So I think that's going to do it. Now, do you want to show them how we're picking, mate? Yeah. All right, so Paul's just going to do a little... It's, there's Harrison there. He's having a crank. There's, you'll never, ever have to pick the whole crop, but pretty much your leaves are going to dictate it. That leaves nice and thick. So Paul's just picking all of the sort of various similar size length. You just want to pull it. Stalks. Yeah, just pulling it out. Right. And you want to keep the actual stalk sealed. So we picked this, what, four months ago, was it? Uh, be probably that. Yep. This is regrown from just uh, what was left. So with five, what you want to do is get your leaves together at the top, because the lengths can be different at the bottom. Place your hand just a bit over an inch over the end of it. Give it a twist. Put that back on the garden. That leaf litter going back in there is going to break down and become what, Paul? Like a biofertilizer. Yeah. I'm actually going to do some tests on that leaf litter because these are a multivitamin and I want to see what happens when these leaves stew up because I'm going to put it through some biodynamics and chuck it onto the earth to see so if it So you've actually... got a, like, a, like a fountain that's yeah. filtering through three layers. Yeah, probably uh, bi that biodynamic mix up. Will break down as it uh, flows through each level? Um, it just, yeah. It, and that, it's, that, it's that's, a triple stirrer. That'll take it's... the nutrients out of the leaf matter? Yes, into the water. Into the water yep. and then it will like basically concentrate itself up, yep. uh, filter through, and then be basically providing with your own biofertilizer. Yes, that's right. So if we want to put that in, in a, a liquid form. Yeah, yeah. So if we want to use that as common sense, it's like when you've got orange juice concentrate, we can take these, put them into drums, let them stew right up, and then we tip that concentrate form. Now, Paul, the people are paying a so. fortune for this biofertilizers yeah, out there at the moment. That's right. What could be healthier than the uh, product itself yeah. straight through a filter Going straight back in again. That's why thinning trees is also not just important to make sure that the tree stays healthy, but you're putting back into the earth what you've taken. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. So that's basically uh, going straight into the boxes. Yeah. And then from here... We'll go into the cool room, sorry. They'll go into the cool room, and then they'll be hitting the table tomorrow. We'll just bundle those up each uh, into healthy-sized $5 bunches, yeah. which I think would cost you closer to $10 for this sort of level of product yeah, but it's all in the right. markets. Yeah. No so chemicals. Not only we're delivering it fresh to the table, chemical free, totally organic, but at the same time is that we're doing it at a price that makes it highly affordable. And Paul, the difference is if you were selling this to a large a supermarket chain, yeah. you'd be lucky if you saw 50 cents a bunch. Mm -hmm. Is that the sort of thing that's going on? Yeah. Let's say you saw a dollar. Yeah. They're going to sell it at five dollars. Yep. What did they do? Nothing. Well, this they did the do some things because they're going to pay. They're going to pay quite a bit of money to have all the mm. shelves and the space and the place and everything else. Yep. But just the same. I mean, if you're able to then take this down to Harvison's Markets, Penrose, mm -hmm. put it on the table, and the customer can come and buy for five dollars. Mm -hmm. That's money in your pocket that helps you get a better crop. You actually get a wage pool. Yep. Have you ever heard of a thing called a wage pool? No, not off the land. Not off so, the land. Well, this is a new one for, for, for a lot of people. Quickly, before we move on, mm. this is what starts to break the back of having to, the need to do large-scale agriculture because if you're only getting 50 cent a kilo for 10 kilos to get $5, if you can get $5 for one kilo, you might be able to scale back 10 times and make the same amount of money. Well, you can move on to other things too. Yes. So you might be doing... Uh, uh, a bit of rhubarb, mm. you might be doing a bit of asparagus, yep. you might be doing some tomatoes. That's right. Uh, before you know it, on one table, mm -hmm. you've got an urn. Yep. That pays the family. It does. Pays the bills. And, and your time is back to being effective. Yeah, absolutely. Now, look at this fella. He's out there having a chat with Tank. What do you think of the rhubarb this morning, boys? Yeah. Oh, I'm very happy, thanks very much. <laughs> well, good on you, Maserati. And Tank, what do you say? Yeah, there's a fly. Yep. <laughs> anyway, Harrison, what do you think about the rhubarb picking, mate? It's kind of fun, actually. It's kind of fun. That's what we want to do, too, with Adopt-A-Plot. Yep. So for $1,000, a family 
could adopt a plot like this where we would make sure that it's getting to market and you could bring your kids down and like, let's say you wanted to do it every second weekend, Paul. Yeah. Possible? Yeah. Once a month, come down and have a weekend here and help pick your own, your own plot, look after it, watch how it's growing, teach the kids how they can do organic chemical free uh, produce. Yeah. And if you're not from the area, use the skills that you well, get from here. Well, let's say them. you're in Sydney, Paul. Yeah. You're up in Sydney and your kids don't get a chance to see anything, or in Canberra, any chance to see how any produce is brought to the table. Yeah. So you, you're not only given them that opportunity and experience, Paul, but under your mentorship, yeah. they're able to learn how to steward the land. Yep. And then from that, coming through to Hardison's, with me over there, mm -hmm. they then learn how to get it to retail, how to get it to market, how to package it, how to promote it. Yep. And they, hey, they can even stand behind a stall and have a go at selling it themselves. Yes. And Paul, they get a return on what they've invested in. Yes. Because once it goes to market, there's a percentage available to come back to them. Yep. And that can then be looked upon as ways for them to show their kids how to become entrepreneurial, how to make money out of the land as well as feed yourself of, as well as bring communities together. Yes. This okay. comes back to last night's conversation on the hunter and gatherer. Oh, by the way, Paul, yeah. our video was banned by Facebook last night. Why? Apparently we had excessively graphic violence sort of content in there, yeah, no. and now we have to appeal to have a review. All we're doing is speaking. What did you do in that video, Paul, that was so disgusting that they had to cut us off? Or was it me eating the chips yeah. in such an abusive way? Yeah, this video is actually just the truth of what's been happening for the last two and a half years of us putting a project together. That's right. And in reality, all we're talking about in that video, Paul, is, is how does Hardison's benefit yes. local producers? Yeah. How does it bring communities together? And how do the communities in regional Australia stand up mm -hmm. and level the playing field? We, through what we're doing here, will show you how you can do ten times less and earn the same amount. All right, Paul, so they can call you if, if a family wants to do something like adopt a plot. Or do we want to do Hardison's Markets? Do we? Yeah, do we want to use its email or do we... Oh, we want to go through, oh, you can call me on 0415 382 445. Yes. And <laughs> just talk to me about what's going on. Uh, I'll give you more information about not only the markets and the stalls that are available at $25 per stall per day yes. from eight till 10 at night, four days a week. That's ridiculously cheap, Paul. Yeah. And affordable. And at the same time as that, we're aiming to get 500 to 1,000 people through that market a week. How cheap? Oh, well, it's what, five bucks look at that, a $5 for something that most people would be yeah. saying, sell the car, mate, we can't yeah. afford it. Five bunches of rhubarb a day is all it takes to have a stall. There you go, and that's the thing. So if, if, if Paul sells five bunches, he's paid for his stall for the day, mm -hmm. that's before he's moved any other product and he's still got some citrus and some asparagus yep. and some smoke wood. Yep. How, that's how you make a profit again. That's, right. hey? that's how you can afford to put the kids into uh, you know, schooling and clothes that don't look like they've been basically scrubbing around the back of some street urchin's place. Yeah? Yep, right. Staying alive, guys, that's what it's called. Yep. All right, then on that note, we might insert some great Australian music. What do you think, Paul? A bit of Bee Gees? <laughs> no, I think we'll... We'll leave it there. Thanks, Har hey, Harrison. Great job, mate. Keep up the rhubarb. Excellent. See you soon, guys.